Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine uh, the zeros as well as determine the multiplicity of a polynomial. Now, what's nice about these uh, equations or these functions here is we have them actually written down as a product of their factors. So um, basically, what we can use is automatically go right into the zero product property. It's very nice. You can see that I have two factors here, three factors here, three factors here, and then two factors over here. Um, so since the factors are multiplied by each other, uh, to solve, what we're going to have to use is use the zero product property. If you remember the zero product property, basically the fact or the zeros or the roots uh, or the zeros of the polynomial, which we're talking about the zeros, is going to be where the graph where the graph crosses the x-axis. Well, that is going to be where your out your output value, which is your f of x in functions, is going to be zero. So what we're going to do is first we're going to set our f of x equal to zero. And then we're going to set all of our factors equal to 0. Now, forget about multiplicity for a second. We'll do that at the very end. Now, all we're simply going to do is apply the zero product property. Remember, the zero product property states if you have a times b equals 0, that means a equals 0 or b equals 0. Okay. So when you have two terms set equal to 0, one of them has to be equal to 0. And that could be terms or that could be expressions. So if I have x minus 1 times x plus 3 squared equals 0, that means x minus 1 equals 0 or x plus 3 squared equals 0. Well, now you can see I have two equations that I can solve using my inverse operations. That's why the zero product property is so nice. So I can add 1 up here. So I have x equals 1 is 1, 0. Or now here, to undo the squaring, since that's squaring that whole price, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Therefore, I'm left with x plus 3, because the square root of something squared is just going to undo each other. And the square root of 0 is just 0. And then you subtract 3. And then I have x equals negative 3. So therefore, my two zeros are going to be x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is determine the multiplicity. Now, remember, the multiplicity is basically what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to its factored form. And we're going to look at the powers of our factors. When the powers are odd, we can say it has an odd multiplicity. When the power is even, we can say it has an even multiplicity. Now, what's the difference? Well, any factor that has an odd multiplicity, 1, 3, 5, 7, et cetera, that means at the 0, where it's going to cross is going to, or where it's going to cross the x-axis, it's actually going to cross. It's going to go through. However, if it has an even multiplicity, it's still going to uh, it's actually not going to cross at that value of the x-axis, but it's actually going to touch it and then rebound. Um, da, da, da. So we look up here and we say, all right, well, what is then, what's the power of this factor? Well, that's 1. So therefore, you could say this one has an odd multiplicity. And then here, you could see the power of this factor, which turned to the 0 of negative 3, is even. So this has an even multiplicity. Okay, and we'll get into you know helping you how to factor those um, or how to determine the end behavior and so forth. Uh, the next one here, I have f of x equals x minus seven to the fourth. Actually, yeah, let's get into this one. So now again, we're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, um, you set it equal to zero, and then you apply zero product property. Now to make this kind of go a little bit quicker, um, I am automatically just going to set each of these equal to zero. So x minus four or x minus seven, sorry equals to 0, x plus 1 half cubed equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. OK, so I'm basically kind of streamlining this a little bit, trying to make it go a little bit quicker um, than rather than setting equal to 0, then solving in there. So now, again, we just do the exact same thing that we did in the last problem. Um, here, we undid, the square, we, we undid squaring by taking the square root. So we're going to undo the fourth power as taking the fourth root. We're going to undo the cube, our third power, by taking the cube root. Okay. Now, don't worry. It's really not affecting anything, because we know that the fourth root is something to the fourth power. That's just going to undo each other. The fourth root of 0 is still going to be 0. So we're left with x minus 7 equals 0. Here, you're just going to be left with x plus 1 half equals 0. And then here, we can, uh, we'll just still be left with x plus 2 equals 0. Now you can see I have these linear equations that I can simply just apply my inverse operations for. So do that. I'll add 7. Add 7. x equals 7. Subtract 1 half. Subtract 1 half. x equals negative 1 half. Subtract 2. Subtract 2. x equals negative 2. 
OK, so now, ladies and gentlemen, what we, what we have done is we have um, found each and every one of our zeros. Now we want to look at our multiplicity and say, all right, is the multiplicity, is it going to be crossing, or is it going to be rebounding and touching? So again, we go back up to the factors. Here, the, um, I'm sorry, the power of the factors. This one has a 1. So here, the first one, the power of the factor is 4. That's even. So that means we're going to have an even multiplicity. That means, again, at that 0, the graph is actually going to touch at 7 and then rebound. Or it could touch at 7 and rebound like that. We'll get into that when we get into the graphing. Just know that it's going to touch it. It actually is not going to cross. But here, for the next two, the 1 half, that has a, the factor has a power of 3, which is odd. And then here, x plus 2 has a power of 1, so that's odd. So these are both going to cross at x equals negative 1 half and x equals negative 2. So we can say that's an odd multiplicity. And then odd multiplicity. And I'm not writing multiplicity all the way out just because I'm trying to get this a little bit clear. I guess I'm being lazy. But I'm trying to make the video a little bit shorter for you. All right, so let's get into these two. And these, uh, these are two that get students all the time. So that's why I really wanted to glue that. I just didn't want to do two you know, easy examples. Um, the first thing is we have a difference here. We have an x squared inside the parentheses. And then we have one outside. So how is that going to change things? Well, for first of all, let's just forget about what it's going to do. And let's just follow our process. The basically the main thing is to set everything equal to 0. Right? Doesn't matter what it is. You're just going to set it equal to 0. Or you could just skip this step. And now set both of your terms that are multiplied to give you 0. Set those both equal to 0. So I'm just kind of doing it the long way back again. OK? Then we just go ahead and solve for x. Now, in this case, here. I have x squared minus 2. Well, I can use the square root method, basically meaning I'm not going to undo the squaring first. I have to undo subtraction. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I have x squared equals 2. Take the square root. Take the square root. x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Right. So remember, whenever you introduce the square root, we got to take the plus or minus. So we actually have two values there. Um, then over here. Uh, now we have to do this just like we did before. First thing we're going to do is undo the square root, or undo squaring by taking the square root on both sides. And then we're left with x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2, add 2, x equals 2. OK. So now in this case, though, you can actually see we actually have three zeros, right? Um, so what is the multiplicity? Now again, the multiplicity is you can find the multiplicity by going back up to the factor and determining the power of the factors. So if you look at this, now obviously we could break this factor. We could break this up to its linear factors, which technically I believe multiplicity. I'm not sure of the full definition if you have to have the linear factors, but I think that would make sense. Um, either way, I would break this. You know, it's, it's probably easy, helpful to go and see that as its linear factors. But um, either way, you can see that the power here is 1. Right? The power of this factor is 1. So therefore, both of these are, even though it's squared inside, that's not affecting the multiplicity. It's only the multiplicity of the power of the factors. And I would break this down, I believe, it's the power of your linear factors. But still, even in this case, um, if we were to break this down into your linear factors, it would be g of x equals uh, x minus the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 2. Okay. Well, you can see, again, still though, the power of those factors is still 1. So therefore, that's odd multiplicity. And then here, you can see it has a power of 2, so that's even multiplicity. OK? Now let's go and get into this last one. Um, and this one, what gets tricky with students is they don't know what to do with the x cubed. They understand when it's x minus something, x plus something, that makes sense, right? I got it. But still, ladies and gentlemen, the exact same thing is, well, how can we rewrite this, though, so it looks like everything else? Well, if I just want to write x minus 3, um, the main important thing to look at that is we could, look, we could rewrite that. Uh, as x minus 0 raised to the third power. So I'd step this equal to 0. And then I would go x minus 0 cubed times x minus 2 times x plus 4. Okay. Then, now we don't really need to rewrite x minus 0 cubed. I'm just doing that so you can see it's in the same format as everything else. I'm going to set these equal to 0. I'm just going to set them equal to 0 as x cubed, not x minus 0 cubed. Okay. Then I go ahead and solve to undo the cube, undo the um, raising something to the third power. I'll take the cube root of both sides. 
Therefore, though, I just get x equals 0. Here I add 2, add 2. x equals 2. Here I subtract 4, subtract 4. x equals negative 4. Okay? Um, what you can see here, though, is all the powers are all going to be odd. So all of these are going to have an odd multiplicity. That means that each one of these um, factors, they're all going to multiply um, or they're all going to cross. Uh, at their zeros. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the zeros as well as the multiplicity when given a polynomial written as a product of its factors. Thanks.